And here we are for our very first video answer key for our daily TCM question. Very exciting. So welcome to students and maybe even practitioners if you're looking to snuff up on your, your TCM knowledge. Okay, so our question today was what are the five functions of chi? It sounds very easy, but it is very key. We want to lay your foundations, make them very strong right now, especially if you're a student, so that when you you can build on your studies and when it comes to case studies and difficult cases they become much easier when you remember your foundations deeply so your five functions of chi did you get this correct number one movement and activity because chi is yang so it moves everything in the body and of course you'll move in different directions depending on the organ so for example liver moves it rules patency the free flow of chi but especially moves horizontally through the body but of course it moves all through the body the lung descends chi the spleen ascends chi stomach descends chi so they all have their own responsibility for moving the chi in a different way Number two, it is yang again, an aspect of yang, so it's good for warming the body. Here you might have a patient who's a little bit cool all the time. And there's a few things to consider, of course. Is it a yang deficiency? Is it a chi deficiency? Maybe the blood is low and it's not just getting out to the limbs and the chi isn't pushing it to the limbs so you get a coolness. Uh, maybe there's a stagnation and it can't get out there. But still, the chi is responsible for the warming of the body and warming various aspects of the body too, not just the limbs. Okay, number three, it governs protection of the body. So Wei Qi, and again, it's Yang, so it's taking energy up to the surface of the body to protect us from pathogens. Okay, number four, it governs retention, containment, uh, the holding of, of things in and up. Uh, many examples here, if someone has, let's say, spleen Qi deficiency, uh, they might have loose stool because the spleen is supposed to be ascending the energy. If they have kidney chi deficiency, because the kidneys rule uh, the, the urinary bladder, they may have uh, frequent urination with a, a very weak stream, this kind of thing. So um, another one too is the tongue, and when the tongue has teeth marks on the side, we see this often as a chi deficiency, because the chi holds things in, it holds things up, and so when it becomes low, then the tongue bleh, goes out to the side and it sits along the sides of the teeth and you get the little marks scallops or teeth marks, whatever you want to call them. So that's a nice sign of chi deficiency. Uh, okay, so hold things in and up. And number five, it rules transformation. So this is all your bodily processes, really. Uh, so think about when you eat food and the spleen chi ascends and takes the food and it helps to absorb the, the nutrients out of it and then it transforms that into something usable, so chi, and then of course that is what uh, uh, rules many of the other bodily processes. So there's your five functions of chi. So let's look at some usable aspects of, of understanding your five functions of chi. Well, first of all, it helps you understand your four dysfunctions of chi, which of course is chi deficiency, Qi stasis, rebellious chi, and of course, sinking chi, which really is just a pumped up version of uh, chi deficiency. So by understanding your five functions, you can understand your four disharmonies and you can understand what their main symptoms are. So for example, if you're trying to look through a case and or you're talking to a patient and uh, you understand what chi does, then when it looks deficient in the body, let's say, you'll understand the symptoms. So remember, chi warms, so they might complain of being a bit cool. Maybe not super cold, that might be more of a yang deficiency, but they always tend to be on the cooler side. Oh, and I always get frequent colds and flus. So here you'd have a protection aspect not working. Uh, maybe the patient also says, and I feel like when I eat food, I'm never digesting it. I feel like I have really poor digestion. And you can go, ha. Huh. That's a function of chi because chi transforms and it's not able to transform their food into something usable, right? And they still feel tired. Maybe they feel tired after eating, which of course is a spleen chi issue, spleen chi deficiency. So you see how you can understand functions uh, and then understand the disharmonies easily when it comes to a case. Same with something like uh, chi stasis. Um, if they have chi stasis and uh, there's the warming aspect of chi, one of the functions, maybe that's why their fingertips and toes are cold because the chi is stuck on the inside and is unable to move, right? And warm, there's two of your functions of chi right to the limbs. So you get the fingertip, finger, uh, finger toes, no, 
fingertips and toes being cold. Um, it also governs retention and containment. So when the chi is, has stasis and is not moving, then things are just very tight. They may, might even have, let's say, constipation because it's containing it too much and then unable to move. So I want you to look at chi that way. See if you can find a case on the internet or in a book you have or in your clinic and, and just sit back and, and look at the patient and say, is chi involved here? What are my functions of chi? Therefore, what are my dysfunctions? And can I see that in the case? Very, very key to building a great foundation. And then trust me, when you get to complex cases or you get into clinic, this stuff will save you. So tomorrow, we will have a look at blood. So if you want to do a little review, um, have a little read through your books and you'll be prepared for anything on blood, TCM style. See you then.